Hello, everyone. Good day to you. This is Molly McCord, and thank you for joining me. As today, we're going to talk about Uranus in Taurus. Uranus is the great awakener, the liberator, the energetic imprint that wants to be free. And we're going to look at what this means individually and collectively as Uranus now voyages through Taurus until April 2026. And this is going to really get into what we haven't seen before in ourselves, where we haven't noticed what we need and what we want, where we've had limitations around money, finances, abundance, understanding the energetics at play here and how you can heal into wholeness and a wholer sense of love, love for self, love for others with this transit. So I'm looking forward to going into this topic with you today. If you are a subscriber or regular listener to this podcast, then you're probably aware that I attempted this episode about a week ago, and it got cut off at the 15-minute mark. Well, now we're doing round two and hoping that we can get a full episode here. I did record this during Mercury Retrograde, and hey, it's just part of the ride at times where you don't know what's going to transpire. So we're going to go through this topic and really focus on what is coming up to heal, where there are areas of greater consciousness and understanding, and a lot more. So I'm looking forward to diving in. If you're new to this podcast, thank you for joining me. My name is Molly McCord. I have two websites uh, where you can find out more about me and my offerings for you. You can go to ConsciousCoolChic.com where you'll find my 12 books, uh, my online courses, as well as some spiritual topics and consciousness issues. And if you are a healer, if you are here to really step into your soul work, your soul mission, and you're ready to be of assistance to others, to humanity in some capacity, please go to mollymccord.online, which is where you can find out more ways to grow and develop your own online business and online presence. I have been doing this work online for eight years now, and it's always changing, it's always growing, and I'm just looking for ways I can support you in doing the same. So let's talk about Uranus. Now, Uranus is the planet that shakes things up, and it's all about liberation, freedom, independence. It's associated with rebellion and doing things your own way. There's an independence with Uranus. And wherever it is in your natal chart is where you're here to follow yourself, where you're here to really do something in your own way, uh, in your own style, It's the part of you that wants to have room to move and room to be an individual. Uranus typically uh, is the same for everyone in the same generation, although it it takes about seven years through each sign. Uh, Generations are longer than that, but anyone born around the time that you were born would most likely have the same Uranus uh, astrological sign. But it becomes more individual in your natal chart based on the house, that Uranus is located in, the aspects to Uranus, and the other energies that are ruled by Uranus, such as Aquarius. Aquarius is known for being the ruling sign of Uranus. And some people associate Saturn and Capricorn as being well paired with Uranus too. It goes back to traditional astrology. Uh, Before we could see past Saturn, in traditional astrology, astrological signs had different rulerships, and planets were associated with different astrological signs. So I'm just noting that because that's how um, some people practice astrology. Typically now in modern days, uh, we associate Uranus with Aquarius and with the ability to go further. Uranus is connected with cosmic intelligence, universal spark, your universal brilliance, how you get something and understand it uniquely made for you, how you are a cosmic spark of the divine. And Uranus is where when we are free to be ourselves and we have that ability to express this energy 
it lights us up and we feel connected to even more in the cosmos. Uranus moves through the full zodiac in an 84-year cycle. So it's typically once or twice in your life that you would experience Uranus in the same sign. So for example, if you were born back in the mid to late 30s, you would be experiencing your Uranus return around 84 years of age. And for those who were not born in the mid to late 1930s, this would be the first time you're experiencing this transit. And it's a big one. Because Uranus is all about shaking things up, shaking up the foundations, rocking and moving and earthquakes and unpredictable developments and sudden swift developments. And as it moves into Taurus, it meets up with the Taurian energy of self-reliance, stability, what you cling to. Taurus is very stable. It's grounded. It's the first Earth sign. And this is important. When a planet is starting in the zodiac, so Uranus just went through Aries, and now is moving into the first Earth sign of Taurus, it has something that it's understanding for the first time when it meets the first element. So in the Earth sign of Taurus, it's really getting at our basics of life and what we need for survival. And that could be food, shelter, water, you know, fire, those basic elements of living. But energetically, it's based on how we value ourselves, how we love ourselves, what we believe we're worth in our life. And oftentimes we might unconsciously hold the belief that we have to earn love just as we earn money. That we have to do something to be worthy. That we have to do something to demonstrate uh, why we're worthy or what we are here to contribute. But Taurus, being the first earth sign, is simply asking you to really be grounded in your own sense of self-love, self-worth, self-value on your own terms. It's what you decide for yourself that doesn't include anyone else. The opposite of Taurus is Scorpio. And Scorpio is where we share with others. We share resources. We share values. We share opinions. We share thoughts. But before you can share, you need to know what you're sharing. (laughs) You need to know what you bring to the table. And Taurus is asking you to get really strong in how you're loving yourself that has nothing to do with anyone else. And so this Uranus transit shakes up what has been weak. It shakes up where there have been holes or where something hasn't connected or been strong in you. It shakes up a false it's like a, a, a false bottom. You know how, um, I think that's a magic trick, right, where the box has a false bottom and it falls out and that's where there was no real bottom there. It's kind of that sense of where there wasn't really a foundation, something falls out and it's not real. So we're looking at what needs to be stronger and wholer in me that I didn't notice before. And you take all that and apply it to the values of your life and where you're ready to make changes, where you're ready to be aware of what you value now. I came across an example recently of of this that I, I thought would be relevant. There is a lifestyle of people who are called schoolies. S-K-O-O-L-I-E. They are often younger families who sell their home, buy a school bus, convert the school bus into their home, 
and travel and live on the road with their children, with their partners, as part of their lifestyle. And it's a significant shift in their value system because it's saying that my values in my life are not about working 9 to 5 for 30 years and doing what my parents did or following a set path or uh, prescribing to a way of life that I thought would make me happy. I'm going to choose what I value. I'm going to choose how I spend my time, how I spend my money, what matters to me. So schoolies uh, get on the road and they live a lifestyle that takes them all over the United States or other countries. And it's very much about this is what I value. I value being in a national park. I value being offline. I value um, having more adventure in my life. It's a change in value system. So anytime we decide that something no longer works for us in life and we're changing our value system, it relates to how we're seeing our potential in a new way and how we're activating more of who we really are. With Uranus in Taurus, now we're going to see more of this where we're changing what we value around our daily life, our daily responsibilities, uh, how we make money, how we show up in relationships, what kinds of relationships are best for us. We look at what we possess, what we own, what we buy, we reevaluate what we want in our lives. Taurus is the energy of accumulation, where you make money, you take it in. Scorpio is the sign of spending money, where it goes out, you pay others, or you share money with others. This is a focus on your own self-reliance and how you want to make money or how you want to establish what matters to you in your life. Uranus and Taurus can set you free from where you have towed the line for other people or where you felt held back uh, for something outside of yourself, perhaps family, uh, perhaps cultural or belief systems or something that was bigger than you. Taurus is the second sign in the zodiac, and it gives you the sense of this is what I want in my life. And depending on how you deal with Taurus energy will depend on whether or not that is comfortable for you or foreign or something that you're ready for or something that you resist. Uranus and Taurus is working with all of us collectively. And so it's going to bring up our collective value systems, uh, how we collectively use money, credit cards, debit cards, uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, money that goes in and out, and how all of that relates to the bigger banking systems, the financial structures, this thing. It changes these systems. It changes them because something in the collective is moving forward. And what do banks need to do now to serve their clients? What do, the, what do we need? What do clients need now in terms of financial m management? Uh, Uranus is associated with electronics, the World Wide Web, everything online, and everything, or I shouldn't say everything, but most and many financial transactions these days are electronic. You swipe your debit card, you swipe your credit card, uh, you transfer money online through your banking accounts or through your um, online pay systems. Uranus, but we use electronics, and Taurus is money. So we can project that there most likely will be some big changes in how we use money, in how we have access to money. Um, Uranus can be volatile. Uh, the stock market could be volatile. The economics are most likely going to be changing in ways that we can't even foresee just yet because this is a seven-year energy. And so we're going to see over the next number of years what is expired and what is now needed to better serve, 
how we live our lives, and what reflects what we value. So money and finances come up even more with Uranus and Taurus. Um, this can be you discover a whole new way to make money. Again, it's accumulating money. So how do you want to make money? And uh, we're living in the sharing economy right now. The sharing economy is Airbnb, is Uber, is what you own that you share with other people and how what your skill set is might not be something you do in a quote-unquote professional role, but it's your side hustle. It's something that you are capable of doing, and it's how you make money. Um, there can be an acceleration in serving more people online. And even you look back over the past 10 years and how so much is now done online. It's become the new norm. So things speed up with Uranus. They can happen quickly. You can make a lot of money quickly. Isn't that what everybody wants, that, that quick million? Um, but it's also unpredictable. And it can be difficult to know when to restrain yourself uh, you have to find your own stability. You have to find your own reliability. And that's part of the challenge because Taurus doesn't want change. Uh, the fixed signs will all resist change. You can't tell me what to do. I like this. I don't want change. I want to stay here. I'm going to stay in this role. I'm going to stick it out. I'm going to see it through. The fixed signs have perseverance. And that's why they're excellent at getting things done. I found this as an anecdotal thing. I found that the fixed signs, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius, can be wonderful salespeople because they will stay with a sales process and be motivated by the security of money, but for different reasons. Um, Taurus for how much it makes, uh, Leo for how it can be seen and acknowledged um, as a salesperson, Scorpio uh, also for how much it makes but the power of money and the wealth that can accumulate through many people, and Aquarius through being able to relate to many people. And I think of Aquarius energies as being the network marketing and how you relate to many people and you build up a sales team. So all of this is interesting because Uranus and Taurus is actually an accelerator. And you can have a quick idea that's off the wall around how to do something or a passion or something that you want to do and launch, and you could just feel this burst to break through your own blocks. So that can come up with this Uranus and Taurus. You, you bust through where you've actually unconsciously been holding yourself back. And you say, I'm ready for this change. Or there's a force outside of you that is shaking you up that can be unnerving, and it's showing you that it's time for change. So the fixed signs, any planets or points in the fixed signs are going to be awakened by this Uranus and Taurus transit, that awakening or activation, how I see it at least, is that it's meant to elevate your consciousness around what is possible and to show you more of how you can do something and excel at it, be good at it, uh, maybe where you've uh, built up a brick wall to maintain safety and, and that brick wall falls down or something crashes down or you feel like you're going through an earth earthquake. But Uranus is cosmic intelligence. It's cosmic energy saying if you can allow this to be released, if you can allow something to go and it can happen quickly, something else can come in that you never would have fathomed, that you didn't believe was possible. So there's a lot of trust with what we can't see and with anything shaking us up. But it also comes down to what do you believe about the universe? 
And do you believe that we live in a benevolent universe that supports you, that wants you to have more of what's true for you? And this is part of the healing into wholeness energy where we can be shut down or shut off from how much we are loved, from how much we are valued, and from what's truly possible. There tends to be a mindset shift with Uranus because Uranus is the higher octave, the higher energy of Mercury. So Mercury is the human mind, human intelligence, human communications. Uranus is the higher octave, which is universal intelligence, the cosmic mind. And The Uranus energy opens up our humanness to more, to the potentials of cosmic creation. And we can, again, unknowingly be resisting that or not see it or hold ourselves back. And the foundation of Taurus is our self-love. And how we take that out into the world. Because how we take that out into the world shows up through relationships, through our possessions, what we buy, through what we believe we are worth, uh, whether that is in the marketplace and the professional world, you know, the, the dollar or currency value associated with the job. The energy is saying... Break free of where you've held yourself back. And I'm feeling it in the heart chakra, the green chakra. And as I'm saying that, I'm getting the image of the heart as love, the heart as, or the green energy as love, um, the green energy as money, finances, self-love, and of the earth, because Taurus is also associated with the planet and the resources that we connect with here through nature, food, food that is grown, agriculture, farming, um, gold, silver, mining, anything of the earth that we dig in and we discover and we find it has a lot of value These are all in play, and the earth brings up climate change, what the planet needs, how we're always in a relationship with the earth, with nature, and how, how that's going, how we're really staying aware or not. We're going to get some quick messages from the earth. We have been. um, There could be more earthquakes, yes. Um, There could be more that shakes up the planet. And there can be more that shakes up financial systems, that shakes up the global economy, uh, that connects with trade of gold, silver, commodities, all of this can actually be a roller coaster because of how Uranus is unpredictable. So the strength, however, is found in the Taurus ability of self-reliance, and remaining strong in yourself, and what you know is true for you, regardless of external turmoil. The Taurus energy is developing its ability to be very 
practical and clear about what it needs. So Uranus and Taurus can shake that up, but bring in more information or more messages that weren't previously understood or known. So, for example, any kind of limiting beliefs around relationships can be a big thing that comes up. Anything about your ability to receive, to receive in relationships or to receive abundance or to receive energetically because that pertains to what you consciously or unconsciously believe around your self-worth. Taurus relates to how we stand our ground because we're so deeply rooted in our sense of self-love and saying, regardless of anything outside of me, I know what I love about myself internally. I know who I am. I know what matters in my life. I know what I want in my life. And chances are that will change. And it can be a freedom. It can be a liberation of, I don't want this anymore. So wherever Uranus and Taurus is transiting in your natal chart, whichever house, that is the area of life, whatever, that's the environment that this Uranus energy is meant to set you free and asking you to trust in the cosmic mind, in universal intelligence, in universal possibilities that maybe the human mind can struggle with, but it's also where the exciting things can happen, where Uranus brings in the flashes of light and the understanding of something and um, why change is needed. I'm also feeling how The Uranus and Taurus, so Uranus shakes up things, right? It shakes it all up like a snow globe. And because of that, it reveals what energies are no longer sustainable for humanity. And Taurus is about sustainability. So that's going to come up is like what can no longer survive what can no longer go forward what is not sustainable right now because it no longer has an energetic connection here and that can be individual and collective and both Um, but it's it's breaking up what is no longer needed and it can be abrupt out of the blue, breaking news, breaking story overnight, that kind of a Uranian development. Now, Uranus is also about advancements, technology, science, um, how we see things differently, how we see it in a new way, how we can use new technology in Torian ways, So, again, coming back to money and finances, but also the earth, um, anything that supports what the planet needs, any new technologies. Uh, We've had solar panels for a long time, solar power. There's also such a thing as lunar power. What other ways can we work with the earth for new electricity, electronics, technology. Um, I know this is a whole giant field of study. Um, This is probably where we're going to see a lot more solutions and advancements. We're going to see new ways of using brilliant engineering and brilliant solutions that support the planet but also what we need so it feels like these kinds of advancements I know they've been in the works this isn't brand new but it can be quantum 
It can be more mainstream. It can benefit more people. It can help more people. Because Uranus is about the collective. It's about all of us. And how all of us have this personal connection. I'm seeing it as this cosmic web Interesting, this cosmic web that goes down into the heart of the earth and deep in the earth is the womb. Taurus is a feminine planet. Gaia, Mother Earth, feminine, growth, nurturing, energies can be accelerated. So part of the transition of Uranus from Aries, masculine fire, is into the feminine. So this can increase feminine awakening energies on the planet for everybody. This is not just women. This is for men. Um, This is the feminine energy that we all carry. This is our heart. This is our connection to the planet, but connection to our love of self and how that is the mirror of our relationships with others. Every astrological sign has a spectrum of expressions and energies. Taurus on one end can be very materialistic, can be very concerned about labels and appearance and how I come across and making sure I look a certain way that reflects um, wealth or status. And on the other end of the spectrum, very basic survival, very frugal or very much about simple, 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 living off the grid, living in a cabin off the grid with no running water. Also part of the Taurus energy spectrum. So this Uranus energy reveals what we want to value next. And if we can be in a place of the bigger picture and allowing it and seeing seeing how it unfolds while knowing it won't affect who you really are inside. It's a bit like I'm getting the image of a tree, right? And you can see the bark, you can see the tree, but it's inside, deep within the tree, It can't be touched where it's very strong and has a lot of wisdom and has the ability to know itself and to keep going no matter what the weather is outside of the tree. Uranus and Taurus, I just see this... um, a lightning rod. And that lightning striking is the sudden knowingness, the sudden understanding, the clarity that can come through around what really matters to you in life. And it can go to the heart and be an activation of what's What's in your heart? It's interesting because I feel like (laughs) you should be in your heart. A part of you, love for yourself, should be in your heart. Acceptance of who you are. A, A deep knowingness about how you're a good person and you're a strong person and that you are worthy of your dreams and you're worthy of the life you want 
to live and a strengthening, a strengthening in this energy that can result in making swift, clear changes in the real world where you don't have energy for things that you used to value. You don't want to do things the same way. You don't want to contribute to something or you can't keep living in, a, in, in one way or you're just tired of your um, same old, same old and you're going to sell your house and buy a school bus and you're going to convert the school bus and see what happens. It's that kind of breaking out of what no longer reflects you And again, this is a new energy overall. Now, Uranus went to two degrees of Taurus in 2018. So from zero to two degrees of Taurus, we had an appetizer or a little sample of this energy. So if you had any planets or points, zero to two degrees, you were already feeling the shaking and baking there and things were moving. Now... Uranus is going to go to six degrees of Taurus in 2019. And then it will get to 11 degrees of Taurus in 2020. Uh, This is because of the retrogrades. So it will move ahead and then move back as, as they do. And it gives us a taste of what's to come in this first 10 degrees. So the first nine degrees are actually the first beacon, zero to nine. And that typically is an opening energy, okay? It opens us up. It brings in new information and new understanding. Um, It shows us the energies. It can be young and innocent energy, It's the part of us that maybe we just didn't know or we just took for granted. So the first deacon can be um, the youth, the youth. And then the second deacon, which is 10 to 19, starts to gain more experience. And it moves into more application of what was learned from the first deacon. So you have the first nine degrees to try out something on the dance floor, right, to get an idea, this is the energy, this is what it's about, okay, got it. Then you move into the second deacon and you get the understanding of applying it, saying, okay, I know this, now I've really got to apply it and I've really got to use it and and understand what this energy is about. And then the third deacon, which is 20 degrees to 29 degrees, is maturing. It's a a sense of more responsibility and understanding of what's been happening. Um, you can have the gifts of hindsight and, and new understandings about the bigger picture in the third deacon. And then by the time it gets to that last degree of 29, 29 degrees of any sign is a completion degree, a graduation degree, a sense of, okay, final test finishing things up, really being clear on what I've learned, and then ready to move on to the next dance floor, to the next dance. So we're just getting started here in 2019 and 2020 about the Uranus and Taurus value systems that we've unconsciously had. And then we get something shaking. We're like, oh, wait, what does this mean? I took that for granted. I always had my credit card, or I always thought this would happen, or I always thought this was important to me. And then you realize, now, wait a minute. No, it's not. Now, wait a minute. I want to make money a different way, or I need different kinds of people in my life. So we have a new awareness in this first deacon about where we've taken something for granted or didn't understand what was going on, or we just were really comfortable in something, and Uranus comes through, and you're inside the snow globe, like it's shaking you up, and it's meant to be, at least what I believe, beneficial. 
that's for you to decide um, if you believe we live in a benevolent universe, a supportive, loving universe that wants more for us, that wants better for us, that wants us to succeed, that wants us to expand. And so Uranus can be ready or not. It's happening. It's on. And guess what? You're ready. You're ready. It's interesting because Uranus is in Taurus and Saturn and Pluto are in Capricorn signs. Our physical world is undergoing big changes, monumental changes, long-term changes. Neptune in Pisces is asking us to maintain a bigger picture of ourselves as souls, as spiritual beings, to remember everything's meant to change, everything is meant to move forward. Uh, you're not even this body. You are an essence of energy. Uh, what can you do to float and sail through the physical world's monumental changes? And having this understanding can be very beneficial because we're living in very big times and there's a lot happening that's going to come forth and going to come up. It's going to ask you to choose what matters to you now. And you might have a typical answer or you might have a reactionary answer or just a, this is always what's been important to me. And then if you sit with it longer and you keep turning it in your head, the question, the inquiry, you might arrive at a different understanding, a new answer where you say, well, actually, I didn't realize I had a choice. I didn't realize I could choose something differently or that I could go in a new direction. I didn't think I could get rid of everything I own, put the money in a bank account, and disappear. I didn't realize I could give up one thing for another or have a career change where you've been in one role most of your life because it's where you got your education, it's where you have your expertise, it's where uh, you have experience. And then all of a sudden you realize, actually, I would love to be a nurse. Or I'd, I'd love to do something on my own. I'd love to be an entrepreneur. It brings up the foundation of our lives and asks you to look at what is possible now. What do you want now? Again, Taurus is about what you want and what you need and what you collect. So Uranus can shake out, shake, shake, shake it out, what you no longer need, want, or value so that then you have room. You have room for the new to come in. It's quite dynamic. It's quite big. Um, a few more things here before we go. So Uranus will be jostling up the fixed signs. Taurus through conjunction. Leo through a square. Scorpio through opposition. And Aquarius through square. These tend to be the life-changing energies. If you're in your mid-40s, like me, you're going to have your Uranus opposition, which is where Uranus, you think it could be a midlife crisis if you don't know who you are and what you truly need or what you truly want. I talk more about the transits throughout your life on my YouTube channel. 
if you go to my YouTube channel and look at playlists, significant transits throughout your life, I have it divided up by decades, where you can see each decade of your life, the big transits. And that can help you get an idea of how this Uranus energy will be working with you. So the fixed signs are going to get the most changes that could be welcomed or not. But again, it's the universe saying, you're ready. This is happening. Lace up your sneakers. We're going. Your planets are points in the Earth signs specifically Virgo and Capricorn, can really accelerate what you're offering professionally. So Virgo is where you've been training and working and applying and understanding um, what you've been doing to be of service, to be of help. The Uranus trine gives you a new opportunity, a new way forward, a new sense of purpose with your past, the planets in Capricorn have experience, have mastery, have authority, uh, have reputation. And the Uranus trine accelerates that. Again, advancements, developments, something to say yes to, new opportunities, breaking out of one role into another role. So it's going to be beneficial. The Earth signs are going to have some things lock in that take them forward. So it can be exciting, it can be a roller coaster, it can happen fast, um, very, it can be unexpected. Uranus is the great cosmic ride, um, but it shows you how there's bigger forces that can support you moving forward. So we're going to be opening up to more of who we really are and more of what we need, more of what we didn't see or weren't aware of. Uranus will expand your consciousness about what you really want and where you don't have to compromise. You don't have to compromise. In fact, uh, Taurus doesn't want to share, okay? Taurus doesn't want to share. You know, you can look at what Taurus has, but that doesn't mean it wants to share. So this is like, well, no, this is for me. And that serves a purpose in the big astrological cycles like it serves a purpose right now for you to focus on what you need what matters to you because that is part of your power you don't have power over other people's stuff and other people's things and other people's opinions you have your power in yourself where have you held that back where have you limited yourself where did you not really believe in that because that's what's also going to be advancing so as always, uh, the astrological journey continues, and I'm grateful to connect with you through this podcast. And I do two episodes every week on Mondays and Wednesdays, as well as more teaching videos on my YouTube channel. And I just love sharing astrology with you. If I can help you learn astrology, please check out my courses uh, that I offer, and perhaps one of those will connect with you. There's beginner and intermediate level courses. And I hope to connect with you in the next podcast as well. So thanks for joining me, friends. And I will see you as we move forward into this new energy. Take good care, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.